Kia ora, ko Elizabeth Kerekere tōku ingoa e mokopuna au o te tai rāwhiti, ko whānau ākai, ko te aitanga mahaki, ko rongo whakāta, ko ngā e tāmani hiri, ko ngā tione o ne, o kūna iwi. Kia ora. I was born in Gisborne, uh, which is where my father, my Māori father, is from. And when we were five, we moved down to Dunedin, where our Pākehā mother is from. And I went to school there and started university. Ever since, from the point we left home, it was always, I wanted to go back there. <laughs> I wanted to go, Gisborne has always been home for me. I lived a long time in Dunedin. I lived 20 years in Wellington, but Gisborne is home. I remember when we were young, because my father was a shearer, and we'd been, or we would be at the sheds, and there were a couple of my uncles who, if I'd had the language then, I would say with takatātui. And I'd really like to do some more thinking about it, but that a lot of those uncles uh, were weavers. Uh, they were what we would might call camp, or people who would be called sissy. Uh, they were hard workers and obviously in the sheds with everybody else, uh, but they were different. And it was never anything that was a problem. From a young age, and I guess because I was the eldest, my father was the eldest, and it was instilled in me that I needed to look after not only my brothers and sisters, but anybody who needed help, that I had the power or influence to be able to do so. And I've just kind of brought that through <laughs> my life. All through my life, then I've gone back home, and that's always been my, like my touchstone. I live at home now, I've been home for nine years, but it's always been the thing that kept me grounded, that kept me knowing who I am, knowing where I come from, uh, and that no matter what the world would throw at me, that was my place. And certainly when I moved to Wellington and established Te Whana Whana, then that's now my political Tūranga Waiwai. That's where I do all my work from. I was really fortunate that when I came out, first as a lesbian, and then as soon as I learned the word takatāpui, as takatāpui, that my whānau always supported me. And even when other cousins uh, of mine were not supported by their whānau, nobody ever hassled me inside of a whānau because my father supported me. What do we actually have to do to eliminate suicide within our communities? What has to happen inside our communities, inside our organisations, and what do we have to do to influence, alongside our allies, the world that our young people are growing up? To make that difference, to, be able to enable them to name themselves, to identify themselves, and to live their truth. Because for me, when we think about no, it is an intergenerational thing. It means that at each level, each generation has its own voice, but collectively, they create the well-being and health of the entire no. When I think about the health of our, inside our community, it impacts really, really different. What's going on for someone who has an intersex condition and the potential of a lifetime of surgeries completely different needs, completely different um, knowledge and understanding that's required to provide really quality health care for them. Um, for our trans whānau, people who are wanting to transition either socially or medically, and, and the health care that's required around that process, it's not just about funding a number of operations, it's actually the need for an entire system to say, this is actually a normal thing. These people are humans. Uh, these people are taxpayers, actually. And it's regardless of your thoughts about those topics, you're meant to provide a quality health care. I would suggest that health professionals um, have some sensitivity to, again, finding out where somebody is at, what it is they need, because sometimes... It's going to have nothing to do with our sexuality, our gender, or our sex characteristics. It's going to be something else entirely. Why am I getting headaches? Uh, but sometimes it's going to have everything to do with our sexuality, our gender, or our sex characteristics. Because the fact is, 
the stigma, the discrimination takes a toll. And sometimes that's going to manifest as something physical. It's going to manifest as impacting on our mental health. So when I have young people come up to me and say that they came out because of reading the resource that I produced, um, the first one uh, with Mental Health Foundation and the second with Rainbow Youth, um, when I came, met Fano, who said they went through that res those resources with their takatapui um, kids and now they've resolved a lot of the issues that were raised, that's really heartening because when our generations can work in that way with clarity and a clear vision of what it is we're trying to do to uplift the whole Fano, that's when the magic happens.